this is a this one really caught my attention today because I realized in all the years that I've been doing this, and I don't mean this show specifically, I mean just been looking at technology and been on the internet. Mm-hmm. I n- I've never actually seen this. Really? And you would think of all the exposure and websites and videos that, that like this would leak out at one point, but I, I ne- I've never encountered it. Yeah. It must be extremely rare. This is an iPhone 11 Pro with an extremely rare printing error on the back shell. Look at where the location of the Apple logo is. Oh. It is... <laughs> not only is it not in the center, it's actually, if you look at the the picture with the lines there, it's also on an angle. So it's off center and on an angle. Oh. Very, very Now, what if you received a phone like this? Well... <laughs> that would be actually kind of cool. It would, right? Yeah. So the thing about it is... Is some people would be irate. They would sit there and say, mm-hmm. "Some people, people, perfectionist types. I can't, that, I can't carry this." Yeah, yeah. But your reaction is what mine would be. I would treasure that thing mm-hmm. because it is so unlikely for something like this to leak out. Now I don't know how this made it into these images. It, it, this uh, report here comes from a tweet via internal archive. On Twitter, and it says, a misprint iPhone 11 that sold for $2,700. This misprint is extremely rare. I'd say one in 100 million or possibly even rarer. I feel like 2700 is a bargain, actually. Mm-hmm. One in 100 million? Now, that would explain why you haven't seen it before. And you realize, Will, that if something happens like this, there's probably some really strict rules around what is supposed to happen with that component. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be incinerated. I'd never want to see it again. Yes. If this thing makes it out the lab, Tim Cook's about to personally come and pay you a visit. Yeah. He doesn't approve. For sure. No, man. They got that high standard to live up to. Now, where did it fetch 2700 Was it listed on, on uh, um, eBay or something? I don't, I don't know how somebody came upon it, but... I think that they got a bargain, actually, mm-hmm. and I'll double the offer. So, okay. hey, if you're the one that paid $2,700, i will give you five grand right now for this very strange. Because I got, you know, I got a collection of some weird iPhones. Well, I don't, I don't know if you knew <laughs> you that. You do, yeah. Yeah, I guess, uh, including one very special one, mm-hmm. which we don't need to go into any more detail than that. But how about that? Even Apple, every so often doesn't nail it and yeah. something, something like this makes it out the factory and it's it's weird to me that it is installed on a finished phone like that's crazy that the checks and balances there like someone knew what they were doing right yeah because if it was just the shell okay i'm like all right it's a misprint and then that went out the side door but the whole phone because now someone had to slap it on now there's been like 15 people i've seen these assembly lines a bunch of people along the way, that means. Or did they do this? Did they do the logo portion last? No. Yeah, maybe it was just like going through the steps so many times. It's just kind of natural to mm. kind of let it go. Or maybe there's more to the story. Yeah, I mean, it, it is hard to see. Maybe it's a plant. Yeah, it is slightly off, but like. No, I mean, it's, it's more green. than slight. The whole thing's green. It's. I, I mean, know. it's tough to see. Maybe it's, yeah. And in the assembly line, there's probably maybe yeah. reflections or something. It's true. It's Sometimes it can just fly past. And, sure, yeah. But the assembly lines I've been on, dude, it's like somebody is not working but observing. Somebody yeah, is, doing, supervisor. is doing the thing, and then the person is standing right beside with no job other than to just watch what they just did. Mm-hmm. It's really intense. Mm-hmm. Anyway. This one made it through, and someone got a bargain at 2700 as far as the collectible aspect is concerned. Mm-hmm. Today's sponsor is Raycon. I don't know about you, Will, but sometimes those wires, sometimes those wires are getting in the way. They get to you. And I don't know what type of activities you're getting up to, but you might get all tangled up in those wires when you're trying to be on the go. I hate when that happens. A uh, guy like you, you got a lot of errands to run. 
Yeah. My legs get tangled into them. That's it's, right. Uh, you're just on terrible. the sidewalk. You're all. Yeah. You've been hogtied on the sidewalk. Yeah. I was like, how did this happen? Yeah. The neighbors start to ask questions. Yeah. Well, Raycon can take care of that for you, actually. There's no dangling wires or stems to get in the way. That's right. No stems either. The whole thing fits inside your ear. And it doesn't matter whether you're binging an audiobook or powering through your workup workout with a pumped up playlist. What goes on your pumped up playlist, Will? Uh a lot of blue later. It gets me <laughs> pumped up. <laughs> I think that's more like an audiobook. Anyway. A pair, going. a pair of Raycons in your ears can make all the difference. Built to perform anywhere and anytime with water and sweat resistant construction and Bluetooth that pairs quickly and seamlessly to whichever your audio device of choice happens to be. Enough battery life for six hours of playtime so you can unplug for a while. And Raycon makes, uh, makes great sound accessible to everyone with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of other premium audio brands. So you can head to the website check out the offerings they've actually got a few different options everyday earbuds performer and the work earbuds so you can see whichever one is the right fit for you and you can actually save even more you can get 15 percent off their products uh just go to buyraycon.com slash lou later you'll get 15 percent off your entire order uh, that's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash lulater, buyraycon.com slash lulater, or click the link down in the description of this video to get 15% off your entire order. So it's not just one item, it's whatever you add to your cart, you will have 15% uh, off of that. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this show. Uh, speaking of Apple, Tim Cook, one of the things, you know, he, he did that interview a few days ago on that podcast with Kara Swisher. I think we've referenced it a couple of times here. Mm -hmm. Was that who it was with? I better, I better at least get this right. New York times interview. Uh, actually it doesn't say who the interviewer was, but I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Willie Do's on it right now. Anyway, there's a lot of things discussed in there and yeah, it must be at six days ago. We, we referenced a few of them. I was right. It was Kara Swisher. I referenced a few of them, including some admiration for Elon Musk. But I actually, I actually didn't see this one, which was a suggestion from Tim Cook that rather than voting in person, I'm talking politics, voting for leadership, uh, that rather than voting in the antiquated way in which people currently do, that you should just use iPhones to do that. So anyway, here's some of the dialogue from Tim Cook. I think we're probably all having a wrong conversation on voting rights. We should be talking about using technology, he said. How can we make it so simple that our voting participation gets to 100 or it gets really close to 100? Maybe we can get in the 90s or something. Now, some of the criticism, here you go. Though voting through smartphone could expand accessibility for some voters, cybersecurity experts speaking to CBS News last November listed a number of ways it could also disenfranchise other voters. Security issues, the cost of iPhones, internet access, and voter identification were all among the main reasons cited. So it's like a lot of new things, new technologies, you know, early on. Uh, there's a there, there's ways to poke holes in it. There's ways to say, okay, it'd be great if it was that simple. I, I wish that there was a, a world in which we could uh, implement these things without any potential downside, but that's just not realistic. Those downsides exist, and you have to be very careful about the way that you implement these things. Because even in this, the past presidential election in the U.S., it was like, don't you remember all the disputes and things after the fact? Uh huh. <laughs> Can you imagine you got apps and phones involved I know, yeah. and? It, People are already skeptical to begin with, with the process, the way it exists. And then they added those mail-in ballots and people freaked out about that. And then, so it's, it's, it is not a straight path towards figuring this out, but it does seem insane that we can do everything else on our phones or online, except for this one thing, this one thing. Yeah. Is. And, and, and by opening up the mail-in, 
you're kind of a step closer, actually, because those people weren't physically present. Mm -hmm. And that was acceptable in that recent, in the recent U.S. election. So anyway, it's obviously complex. It is not a straight path, but um, it's not a turnkey type of thing either. Yeah. Apparently, Xiaomi and Oppo are going to join Google in attempting to make their own mobile chipsets. So we covered this recently how uh, Google was looking to get involved in something similar to what Apple does in creating their own chipset in order to have more control over their hardware on the Pixel devices and more control over pushing out updates and changes and just be more intimately involved in the on a hardware side than they currently are buying something off the shelf from the likes of somebody like Qualcomm. Mm -hmm. And so the, the story there is that they were going to collaborate with Samsung to build this custom chipset to their specification. Apple was first to get there, I suppose out of this bunch. And it turns out they were able to achieve some pretty amazing things. Obviously it's, uh, it's well documented. And so now other manufacturers want some of that uh, control by the looks of it. And so the Google report comes out, and then now you have this one catching up, which kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing in question here is just how custom or how unique these chips can really be, given the fact that they're trying to snap their fingers and have this custom piece or have this thing that is exclusive to them. Mm. And so the Google report or the report of Google doing their own custom chip or chipset to uh, alongside Samsung led me to this consideration that, okay, maybe it's more of a tweaking than it is from the ground up, especially if you're hoping to get this done for uh, a relatively soon implementation. Like if you're trying to do it for, next gen or the generation after that. Mm -hmm. But of course, nobody wants to be left in the dust. And this is really interesting and, and, and could be down the road somewhat detriment, detrimental to the likes of Qualcomm. If, is this the beginning of the end? I don't know if it's the beginning of the end because like I said, I think a lot of these things are collaborations for now. If you wanted a custom chipset and and let's say Google selected to go and collaborate with Samsung. That was a report. I'm not saying that that's happening. Could Qualcomm not work directly with the hardware manufacturers? I don't know. I don't know if they'd be willing to, but would they be willing to collaborate as well and therefore still be involved in the business, mm -hmm. still have some sort of uh, interest in the development out, outside of just selling you the prepackaged, ready to go chipset? Mm -hmm. So they can make a specific chip for a brand. Maybe. I don't know. I'm I'm just uh, speculating on a way that they could remain involved in the process. I mean, Samsung can't get all the deals, can they? Mm. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you would assume that they would be competi become competitive in that sure. space as far as appealing to the manufacturers if they do want to go in there and tweak certain aspects of... Mm -hmm. of these chipsets. So anyway, this uh, the new report here. Uh, according to Digitimes, these custom processors inside, inside of Xiaomi and potentially Oppo could hit the market in late 2021. See, that, that, that means that they would probably already be working on it. Yeah. Both Xiaomi and Oppo recently unveiled flagship phones and might not be putting out new devices for a while. So... Maybe early 2022 instead of late 2021, but this could definitely be a trend within the industry that the hardware companies that put their name on the outside of the phone won't be more involved on the inside of the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you been following anything with this uh, Las Vegas boring company do doing the tunnel in Las Vegas to the convention center? You've been following any of that? Um. A little bit. There seems to be uh, quite a few announcements for the past, I guess, week or so, where they actually have pictures, and it looks good. It actually looks pretty nice. So you like it? Mm-hmm. That was a quick, quick switch. Got the hoodie off. Yeah. People are giving it a hard time. Why? Uh, well, maybe because the promise was so big. People were. 
maybe expecting more than what they got because some of the stuff that had been shown off with the with the boring company, some of those uh, early videos with the underneath Los Angeles, the cars getting into the tunnel and flying around insane yeah, speeds. Like, it'll be automatic. You don't have to drive straight it. into autonomous. Um, and then of course we talk about the hyperloop as well. And I guess it just, when you see it in action, it's a bit of a, I mean, it's a car in a tunnel, you, you know, it's a small tunnel and it's a Tesla inside the tunnel traveling 35 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And so I guess it's just not to the extent that people had hoped for the first major project involving the boring company. Even the fact that it's not a specialized vehicle, it's just a, it's just a regular model three mm -hmm. going through there. It's not like they developed a people mover or something like that. Um, so I actually saw this on Twitter before I got to this article. I saw a few people saying, and, and you paid how much for this? It was like a $55 million project. Hmm. Um, I mean, you can scroll down and say, yeah, crappy Disney ride. It's all kinds of shots of being fired over here. Uh, <laughs> That's aggressive. It's all, I'm telling you right now, you can I mean, find all kinds of tweets. Move over Kino, Elon Musk's dumb Tesla tunnel, now the lamest thing in Las Vegas. Watch Tesla's moves slowly move through Elon Musk's new boring company tunnel. It's a crappy Disney ride. Vegas actually let Elon Musk make a less efficient subway system. They really let him make a subsidized Tesla advertisement. You conned $53 million for Vegas Circus tunnel ride. Hashtag musky business. Uh, CNET, it looks lame. You know what? People just going after it. Now, I can see that. You know, I get it. He, the, uh, he, Elon Musk, his companies, even Vegas to a certain extent, are kind of fun targets uh -huh. when something doesn't m meet the expectation. But maybe my perspective is a little different just because of the amount of time I spent in Vegas. I don't know if that's influencing me in some way, but I'm sitting here thinking, man, any way to get around that city when there's a convention going on, that that any extra way, mm -hmm. even if it's not the fanciest thing, even if I'm not on a futuristic glass vehicle, even if I'm not traveling 100 miles an hour, is still an improvement over the previous way. Even as an extra, even if the previous way still exists, which, by the way, means getting taxis in these, like, round roundabout things in the front of each hotel and uh, or taking the shuttles, which work better from some hotels than others. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, so the actual numbers on this is going to be able to carry... 4,400 people per hour in the 62 vehicle fleet. And that's uh, the convention center loop. So it's not a tremendous distance for the time being, but it's a fair number of people in an hour. And some of these conventions can be tens of thousands of people. Right. And I presume you're still going to have surface travel going on. So this will just take some of the heat off. And I, of course, there's some sort of aspect, which is an advertisement. Mm -hmm. the biggest convention I believe that they host there is consumer electronics. So to have all these Teslas moving around underground is pro good promotional sure, stuff. Yeah. So I, I kind of get it. I get the underwhelming aspect, but I also appreciate the existence of it. And I also don't necessarily know if it's a finished thing the way it is. Right. Or, or if these cars can pick up a little more speed at some point down the road. I don't know. I mean, it's a tight tunnel. Yeah. This almost seems like a version one, right? Like, they're obviously going to improve on this. They're not going to give it up. Um, Like you said, maybe they'll build, like, a like a bigger transport system beyond just the Model 3. And, uh, I don't know, maybe have some more 
cool aesthetic look to it. Well, they got colorful LEDs already, Will. Well, they need holograms and <laughs> lightsabers and stuff. <laughs> but this this looks very beautiful. Yeah, and, and you know, but you know what, man? Digging tunnels under pre-existing cities, it's already hard and cool to begin with. Yeah, it's very efficient if you think about it. Okay, but here, so here's the one thing, though. Should they have just done a subway? Did they just basically do a subway? Would a subway system have moved way more people? Now, okay, in the times of COVID and everything else, maybe being in separate vehicles has some merit to it. I guess this, like, boring company concept would be within cities as well. So you can actually drive your own car right underground into another place i think the problem is how slow they're traveling i think that's a, one of the yeah. problems is like you it's going to definitely be faster in vegas during a convention because of traffic and stoplights mm -hmm. so de depending on where you live and how slow the above ground transit or travel is that would determine the usefulness of the tunnel and the best Obviously. form of it would be, it would be automatic, right? You kind of ride into this tunnel, possibly with a Tesla, and then it would just be in automatic mode, take you to where you want to be at high speeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the speed, right? is, the speed is key. And I'm sure there's all kinds of complexities with that, yeah. getting the speed thing figured out. But you got to travel quite a bit faster than above ground to make it all worthwhile because it's obviously very expensive to be digging tunnels. Right. And uh, in this case, for Vegas, it's $55 million for mm -hmm. this short stint. I mean, you can see the... And quite a long time to build. Right? Quite a long time. And you can see the map there. It's not traveling an enormous distance. So, yeah, yeah it's it's a tremendous cost to be down there digging. And eventually, it's going to have to be a lot better than above ground travel to be adopted elsewhere outside of... A place like Vegas. But Ve Vegas is a nightmare during CES to get around. So I'm just saying, just keep that in mind. Like anything, if you ever plan on going, any extra transit to take the load off mm -hmm. is a welcome addition. And of course, RGB. Yeah. Lots of RGB. <laughs> oh, this one's really weird. Another Tesla story. Tesla starts advertising a Model 3 with 93 miles of range on the website in Canada. Huh. So... That's, Obviously, uh, the Model 3 can travel a lot further than that, typically. Some sort of typo? No. This is a real thing they're selling. Oh. And it is, a, of course, a, some sort of a software limit because they don't make a battery cell like that. And so you can check this little box, which lets, lets you limit to 151 kilometers of range, which is an estimate. It's, a, it's around 93 miles. Hmm. But Why? <laughs> That's a great question, Will. So apparently here in Canada, there's some sort of federal government incentive, $5,000 incentive. If you purchase an electric vehicle with a cost no more than $55,000 after options, huh. less than $45,000 and no more than $55,000 after options. And when you convert the cost of the Model 3 to Canadian, you're over that price. Mm. And therefore, you do not qualify for that incentive. Mm. So I presume there's a certain number of people who wanted that incentive, saw the cheaper Model 3 with the less range, and said, for the 5000 bucks, I don't need the extra range. Yeah, I don't need to drive really far. But that still seems insane. Yeah. I guess uh, if you're not traveling too far, why not? Yeah, maybe. But just to know that your vehicle is capable of so much more and then you've checked a box to software limit it. Yeah. Is there a way to hack it? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> easy, Will. In order for the Model 3 to qualify, Tesla created a new version of the Model 3 for $44,999 in Canada. Oh. Software locked the battery pack to 150 kilometers or 93 miles of range and removed autopilot. It was a, originally an off-the-menu item, but now they have completely uncovered it for anyone to select on the website. 
Why did they turn off autopilot or disable it? Well, they're trying to get the cost down, right? They, they got right to below $1. Oh. So 44999 was the critical number necessary to unlock the $5,000 incentive. Uh. You see what I'm saying here? Yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that anybody does it. Uh, apparently, they're keeping statistics on a number of registrations in Canada. And apparently, as of now, only a few people have made the compromise. <laughs> <laughs> people. I want to meet those people. Who are you that you took the intentional hit on range? You know, five grand is five grand, though. Mm hmm. Because if you think about it, if you didn't, if you don't limit the thing, then it's 46,389. Otherwise, you're 45,000 45, minus five. So you're at 40,000. So it's mm -hmm. like, I guess it's like a six, five, six thousand dollar difference. You know, six thousand, six thousand three ninety dollar difference to and get that's, the that's real forever. range. It's forever. Well, maybe you're right, Will. Maybe people figured out how to hack it. I don't know. Yeah. Very bizarre little finding over there. Yeah. I'm surprised Tesla even bothered with it. It's very, very strange. Yeah. I'm surprised they even gave people the option, but there's some reason, some incentive. Maybe we're not seeing it. Mm. This next one should lighten the mood a little bit. Since we're deep on the Tesla talk today, how about a secret butthole Easter egg? Butthole. <laughs> uh, you know, these cars are full of Easter eggs, right? Yeah. All kinds of special abilities that many people don't know about. They can dance and open and close doors if sure. it's the Model X and jingle bells and I don't know, you know. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Special tricks. Well, um, the new one here, at least I haven't heard of this one before, the butthole Easter egg. Now, before you read down, I want you to okay. take a guess what the butthole Easter, Easter egg is. Oh, you are you're reading too much. You already no, looked. You I, already looked. I didn't. I didn't. Um, well, you gotta stop looking at the screen then because you might see something over there. Uh butthole. Some sort of farting noise? I don't know. It's not a bad guess. Uh, the the command is the voice command is open butthole. <laughs> now that will open the charge port. And close butthole will close the charge port. Uh, the door on the where the charge port is. Right. Okay, well. Now, if you were a Tesla owner, would you use this command? Uh maybe once or twice when my friends are But what if you of, what if you start to get used to it? Open butthole? <laughs> <laughs> I would I don't think I would say it. It's a little like if mild. I'm alone, it's like it's very it's too cheeky. <laughs> Otis looks at you sideways. Hey, yeah. man, easy. Excuse yeah. Me. If you scroll down, you can see, I think it was a, there's like a TikTok, a guy actually doing it. Yeah, you can see here. You just say open butthole. And, if you say open hole, your Tesla you charge port will open. This guy tries it out. Open Jeremy butthole. Judkins 2 on TikTok. Look at that. Boom, door opens up. Close butthole. There you go. It's got how many of these things in there? Are people still discovering Easter eggs? Like, why is this one in the news right now? I guess maybe people are. I'm sure some people knew about it. But that's uh, that's some fun to have with your when your car can surprise you months later. Yeah. Bunghole. There's also <laughs> bunghole. <laughs> So it will re it will respond to either of those. Yeah. Well, that's that's fun. Oh wow! Look at this. Comments from other Tesla owners indicated that open butthole actually opens their vehicle's rear trunk instead. Hmm. So you don't even know what you're gonna get. Your your own yeah, car it's a may surprise. have surprise. Well, hopefully when we get it opens your butthole. <laughs> oh, it's hey, like, oh hey hey <laughs> like whoa geez yeah I didn't want this. No, it actually listens to you? Yeah. No, you don't want that. Anyway, I thought that was a weird, I thought that was a weird finding yeah. right there. Uh, I don't know. You Maybe you read this one. Jack Ma, he got this, like, massive fine. 
I think it's like a record breaking fine. Obviously, there's been conflict between himself and the government over there. Dating back to this speech that he gave, he was critical, and then he was supposed to do the IPO with the financial services company. It got blocked. It's tension. And then he was gone for a month or two. Laying low, working on his golf game, chilling out. Yeah. And I guess they go back and government people are taking a look at the uh, anti-competitive, anti-monopoly stuff. As you would, and they determine that they're going to uh, fine two point seven five billion dollars antitrust fine. You, I mean, what a fine! Holy cow! How is this calculated? Like, what? it's a big number. Yeah, yeah. They probably did it, and and it was two point seven five. It was probably two hundred seventy five million. And then they were like, someone was like, give me that sheet. Yeah, so I had a couple more zeros. There was, it was a lot of zeros flying around. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's probably some kind of percentage of revenue that they right. perceive as being uh, acquired as a means of uh, anti-competitive practices. Mm -hmm. I presume that's how they run the calculation. But, all, but, but who, no one, I mean, who knows? Who knows the reality of the situation other than those involved? Yeah. As is usually the case. Once seemingly untouchable, Alibaba founder Jack Ma has endured a tumultuous run that saw his Chinese e-commerce giant hit with a record $2.75 I'm talking in U.S. the antitrust fine on Saturday. I mean, he's been knocked down a few pegs in the country as far as like, he went down to like fourth richest in the country. And previously, he was like the golden boy. Previously, they had him as the Chinese success story. Yeah. He was the guy. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that thing has turned around. This is a, according to Reuters. That was until his Shanghai speech triggered a backlash that led to the scuppering of a blockbuster $37 billion IPO for Alibaba Financial Technology, mm. as well as a clampdown by authority on the e-commerce giant itself and the wider platform economy, which continues to reverberate. Huh. Do you think he'll get it back to the top spot? No. I, uh... He's changed so much. I just... Like, changed things so much. I just think that it's a new... These, I mean, it's a handful of companies over there. I told you before, it's like at the 10 cent tower over there. It's just, it, there's some really successful companies in China that have gotten to a point where they're, I'm not going to say bigger than the government, but they're big. They're big. And the government take, a, take another look and say, whoa, it's a lot of success over there, but mm -hmm. maybe that's too big. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, he was obviously at the forefront of that. I think it's going to be increased scrutiny going on mm -hmm. since I mean, he's been a catalyst for this investigation into these types of companies. And I heard that they were having meetings with the 10 cent types as well. Right. And uh, going in there into the boardrooms, asking a few questions. Mm -hmm. So, but we're talking about big money. I mean, you want to talk about a sting? You wake up in the morning. Yeah. I mean, Willie, do you got a, you get a speeding ticket and you're like, God, geez, it's a bad day. It's a bad day. I'll try to fight for it. If you, I <laughs> you mean, know, but, but, but the thing is, that's like a hundred bucks yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I imagine the, and now obviously it's relative. The guy's got, I mean, he's in control. He's got some, some money, but still 2.75 billion plus you already had beef. Yeah. Or you already had a disagreement and they're like, oh yeah, little disagreement. How about this? That's definitely some sort of message. How about 2.75 billion? Yeah. How about that? We see, do we, do, do we still disagree? After two point seven five billion, do we still disagree? What about no, we good. <laughs> we good. Wild, wild times. You ever heard of uh, tactical grandma? Yes. I Easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can say it's all yours. Go ahead. Um, 
I only know a little bit. But yeah, go ahead. Apparently, she's a really good Call of Duty player, and she's very old. Well, she's fifty-eight. I mean, okay, well, yeah, not the oldest grandma in the world, but yeah, definitely not your typical Call of Duty gamer. No, this fifty-eight-year-old grandmother might be better at Call of Duty Warzone than you. Probably better than you, Will. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, that's me too. Welcome yeah. to the club. Uh, I once figured out a hack where. I could just fly in a helicopter. Did I tell you about that? Yeah. Yeah, I was so happy with that. I was like, oh. When the I, circle this, gets closer and closer, you're just up in the air. There's something about uh, Battle Royale games that makes me so badly want to find other things I can do that I'm not supposed to do. And it's dating back to, it's not even necessarily Battle Royale. It's anything with like a large world. Well, that's the freedom. Where I'm like, let me see if I can games. do this. Or let me see if I, anyway, yeah. So I would... And, and and they fixed this. I, I, it's not, it doesn't, I'm pretty sure they fixed this. You can't do this anymore, but yeah. you would just get to helicopter and you would stay airborne at the highest level and just rotate in around the edge of the thing. Where no one can shoot you. Because yeah. You're too high. And it was early days war zone. So I don't know, obviously yeah. people figured it out and they just shoot rockets at you or whatever. And it's over. But I actually successfully won a game that way. And, <laughs> and, there was I was way happier about that than winning the right way. Yeah. Just because it was just funny. Right. But anyway, yeah. I'm just spoiling games for everybody. Uh -huh. And the other thing is if they do shoot the it down, it still falls likely overhead. And sometimes it can, it can fall on individuals who are the last remaining because they're in mm -hmm. such a tight section. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. don't get me started on that. We're such noobs. Yeah, well. fun times. Right now, Warzone people are like, hey, man. <laughs> You don't, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't be spreading that crap. Yeah. You have to do it the right way. I'm spreading you gotta, that. You got to win the right crap, way. Crap, you know. But also, they're also like, go ahead and try that on me. Yeah. Go ahead and try that. I'm going to... Punch you right in your stupid face. I'm going to tactical grandma. I don't yeah. want you to try that with me. One-two punch. So she's 58 years old. She... Uh, I guess her husband or grandkids... Who got her into it? I just read this. Uh, anyway, she is on Facebook gaming and Twitch and now TikTok, and she got 570,000 followers according to this article. Um, yeah, her husband and, and kids encourage her to try streaming. Mm. Here's her quote. I'm like, no one's going to watch, want to watch someone my age play video games. They're like, then you have nothing to worry about. If no one's going to be there, you might as well try it. Mm-hmm. So she did. And guess what? People started watching it. So I got a couple of clips here from TikTok. And uh, apparently now she's streaming 40 hours a week. <laughs> Six days on Facebook gaming. And then two days on Twitch. And it's here. It's here. I mean, look, there's like a million views on some of these clips. She knows how to snipe. and Wow. You know, That's impressive. I, I mean, she, she's she's taking care Look of business. And everybody's very <laughs> impressed. Everybody's very impressed with tactical grandma. Yeah, good for her. Here's a comment from somebody. My grandma can't even use her phone correctly. <laughs> Meal, meanwhile, tactical grandma's out there sniping. Yeah. So, anyway. Right on. Uh, a prominent gamer by the name of Swag, a streamer with 1.5 million followers on Twitch, said, wait, this... So dope. He creates content for FaZe Clan. Mm. So he thinks it's dope too. Who knows? Maybe we see her in a competitive scene. Tacti yeah. Tactical grandma. She can play uh, quads. On, on, on a competitive scene. Yeah, with those guys. You never know. It's never too late. That's the lesson here, Well, Yeah. It's never too late. Never too late for you. <laughs> this one is weird, but cool. Ford has given 100 stores the go-ahead to build standalone Bronco dealerships. Just Broncos, eh? The Bronco has apparently been a big surprise for them. Well, not a surprise, but it's just a big success. I think they expected it to be a success. Mm -hmm. but, Isn't Kirk going to get one? Yeah, he, he Kirk really wants one, but he, do, cool. he, he doesn't want a sport one. He wants the real deal, which is tougher to find or maybe not even available yet. <laughs> There's so many reservations. What does that say? 190,000 Bronco reservations. Holy cow. People really want this thing. Mm. 
uh, yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool look. Obviously, the throwback aspect, and you can find the sport ones, but not so much the straight up Bronco. There's Doug DeMiro. He got his hands on one, but that looks cool. Anyway, um, apparently the dealers came up with this idea and approached Ford and said, "Hey, would you mind if we did this? Because we're getting so much interest in the Bronco. Let's just do a Bronco dealer." And Ford thought about it, and they, I, I believe they gave in a green light. Now, if you scroll down, you can kind of get a sense for what this will be like on the inside. Demand is so high that it actually makes sense to invest the money in building a different showroom specifically for the Bronco, Bronco Sport, and all future models or derivatives. And as a bonus, Ford will be re rewarding those dedicated Bronco dealerships with a slightly higher product allocation. So if you did this setup, then... You, you, your dealership would have access to higher volume of units oh. because you're servicing that clientele better. Cool. Now, if I wanted a Bronco or I was thinking about a Bronco and I rolled past the dealer and I saw that Bronco specific setup and I went in there and visited that, that might be enough to seal the deal. Really? Just because it, it's, it's different. You yeah. haven't seen it before. Yeah, it's a cool experience. Like, look, they got the it's rims on the wall, wood. and it's very outdoorsy. Yeah, they have the vibe right. And and you can see the finishes on the left. Like, you can order it up however you like right there. Mm. Yeah, this looks cool. And it acts as an advertisement, like a billboard in each town or city where this is going to be, where you're like, oh, damn, they brought the Bronco back. If you're one of the only people on the planet that hasn't heard of that they brought it back, mm. it acts as a billboard as well. So, I mean, it remains to be seen if it's going to be a hit or not, but. Do you know where they're going to start first? Seemed like a cool move to me. Um, let's see here. It isn't likely to be a bad strategy. Bronco reservations are converting to sales at over 65%. Uh, Bronco Sport has sold 23,000 units so far. Maybe automotive news. The original report was on automotive news. So maybe they are able to say where these locations are, but I don't think so. I don't know. I don't see it. Yeah. Be on the lookout in your local territory for a Bronco specific dealer, but mm -hmm. you're going to have to get to the end of the list, by the way, because there's a lot of reservations out there. It's cool either way. Mm-hmm. You know about the CRISPR stuff, right? Yeah. Gene editing, manipulation. Yeah. Uh, they go cool in there. Cool and scary. <laughs> cool and scary. That's this. That's the subtext for this show. Cool and scary. Uh -huh. Apparently, they made it better already. So, originally, you had the CRISPR gene editing system. Target specific genes. And now they have this thing called CRISPR on, CRISPR off. Like an on and off switch where they can go in there with a level of precision. They can take the edit on or off. Hmm. Binary. The new gene editing technology developed by Whitehead Institute member Jonathan Weissman and University of California, San Francisco. Assistant Professor Luke Gilbert is called CRISPR off, capable of controlling a gene with laser-like precision while leaving the broader strand of DNA unchanged. The edits are not only stable enough to be inherited through hundreds of cell divisions, but are also fully reversible. We can do this for multiple genes at the same time without any DNA damage. So, of course, this takes out some of the risk involved in creating this type of edit, in creating this type of modification. It's like, this is like computer programming now, hmm. except it's your genes. Mm. And so getting back to the idea that you can do some amazing things with this. So, uh, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Uh, in tests on pluripotent stem cells, which can turn into any type of cell desired, the researchers managed to almost entirely silence the expression of the tau protein, which is heavily implicated in the onset of Alzheimer's disease. Wow, you can just turn that off, eh? Yeah, you just hit the off button on it. What we showed is that 
This is a viable strategy for silencing tau and preventing that protein from being expressed. Tau? That, that's the name of the protein. Mm. Adding that the means of delivering this into an adult human have yet to be fully fleshed out, but it shows early promise. Wow. <laughs> I mean, for diseases, that's amazing. But I think there might be too much power. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is <laughs> this I mean, the scary part of it. Yeah. This is just freedom, right? To do whatever they want. Yeah. To manipulate anything. Well, your genes. well, if you want to go a bit deeper. Uh oh. They compared the delivery, deliverability potential of CRISPR off into a human being to the newly developed RNA technology, which forms the basis of both the Moderna and the BioNTech coronavirus vaccines. So they can make vaccines based on the RNA. Well, technology. let's just say that you can change the expression of genes across a large number of people. Mm. Anytime you have a technology it seems particularly a really powerful one like this. You can imagine the scenarios in which it can be used for good and you can imagine the scenarios in which it can be used for bad. Can't, doesn't it always seem like that? Of course, yeah. It's like anything that is cool or novel, you, you, your brain splits immediately and goes, could, that could happen and that could happen. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you just start to consider who's in control of it and what are mm -hmm. the limitations. Mm -hmm. But I mean... This is just the idea of editing with that level of precision. Programming. Oh. The expression of the genes in the human. It's so cool and also scary. Yes. Like almost everything that's cool. It also has to kind of be scary. I think. Yeah, I don't know. For sure. 